magnets appear to be simple. They either stick together or push apart. You're probably familiar with playing around with magnets and, and you get them close together and it's almost like they reach out and grab each other and pull each other together. But if you flip them around, they repel. How can a magnet both pull and push? The surprising answer, light. It turns out that what's going on is that there are particles that are being exchanged between this magnet and this magnet. And those particles are called photons. These are the same photons that create light. Photons are the packets of energy our eyes detect to see the world around us. And in the bizarre world of quantum mechanics, photons are at the very heart of magnetism. Plunging down to the subatomic level, we can see how atoms are made up of a nucleus surrounded by a cloud of electrons. Think about the structure of an atom. There's a positive charge to the nucleus, and then the electrons have a negative charge. These two attract each other. To explain this attraction, quantum physicists think that both protons and electrons spit out short-lived bursts of photons. Oppositely charged particles absorb each other's light, and this draws the particles together. This attractive force is known as electromagnetism. Atoms themselves would not hold together if it weren't for electromagnetic forces. Electromagnetism also causes individual atoms to stick together to create the molecules that form us and everything around us. Electromagnetism is responsible for the very structure of our matter, atoms holding together. Molecular bonds in our bodies, those are bound together by electromagnetic interactions and therefore they're bound together by light. A universe without electromagnetism would come apart at the seams. If electromagnetism was turned off, matter would dissolve. Everything would just ooh, fall apart. I could probably, with my superhuman strength, hold myself together, but the rest of you are doomed. Electromagnetism holds everything together, and it creates a sensation of solidity. When you touch something, that's the electromagnetic force as well. We have electrons in our atoms, and they repel each other. And when you try to touch something, those forces keep you from actually physically touching it. The reason I don't fall through the floor is not that the floor is particularly solid. Most of the floor is empty space. It's the electric forces of the atoms in the floor against the electric forces of the atoms in my body that hold me up. Just those little forces of those few atoms are enough to hold me up against the entire gravitational force of the Earth. Electromagnetism rules. Electromagnetism rules on Earth and in the night sky. In fact, electromagnetic forces shaped the night sky. Turn back the clock to when the universe was just 380,000 years old. At this time, the cosmos is just a turbulent mix of subatomic particles, protons, electrons, and trapped between them, light energy. In the early universe, there were no atoms because the energy was so intense that separate charged particles existed in a very hot, dense, primordial soup. Then, everything changes. Between the time the universe was about a minute old and the time when the universe was 300,000 years old, electromagnetism slowly came to the fore, and protons and electrons began to feel electric forces and combine as atoms. Electromagnetism essentially began to determine the dynamics of matter and the ultimate formation of everything we see. 
Electromagnetism draws electrons and protons together to create the first elements, hydrogen and helium. And the light, trapped between these fundamental particles, is set free. The lights of the universe turn on for the very first time. As the newly formed atoms swirl around each other, their combined magnetic effect begins to act. The smallest magnets in the universe are atoms themselves that create basically mini barb magnets that are on the scale of the subatomic world. Eventually, these chaotic micromagnets begin to coalesce and generate vast magnetic lines, also called magnetic fields. And then over time, what happens is that these magnetic fields begin to grow. And so all the magnetic fields we see today in our universe can really be attributed to these primordial magnetic fields. Now, breakthrough research into these original magnetic fields is changing everything we thought we knew about how stars are born. The old picture of how stars are formed is all you need is gravity and time. But we've come to understand that the problem's a little trickier than that that actually magnetic fields play a fundamental role. So it's possible that without these magnetic fields, stars themselves would not exist. We once believed creating a star was easy. Take a huge gas cloud, add some gravity, and stand back as the gravity crushes the gas down to a hot ball of plasma. Temperatures and pressures rise until fusion sparks. And a star is born. Now scientists think gravity alone is not enough. To construct a star, you also need magnetism. The primary mover when you're forming a star is gravity. The material condenses in the center to form a star. And as that star forms, there's material swirling around it, attracted to that central mass by its gravity. But there's a problem. This stuff has what's called angular momentum. Angular momentum is the force of rotation that keeps the clouds of gas spinning around the center of a forming star. It works against gravity, smearing the gas out into a thin disk. Angular momentum and gravity are basically in a fight. The angular momentum is what keeps things spinning around out here, whereas the gravity wants to tug it in towards the middle. If somehow we could lose that angular momentum, then star formation would progress. Young stars, or protostars, can only ignite if the central gas cloud reaches a super hot, dense state. But the disk spins around the center too fast for gravity to do its work. Scientists now understand that a third force is at play here. And that's where magnetism can play a role. The magnetism of the protostar, the forming star, can actually affect the disk and slow it down and actually let it drop in and help the star itself form. The swirling gas in the forming star and its surrounding disk generate powerful magnetic fields. These fields grab at the fast-moving particles, slowing them down. Magnetism works like a cosmic break. It, it, it slows down a little bit and eventually spirals into the center. Gravity starts to win. Gravity beats out that angular momentum, and star formation happens. Gravity drags the gas disk inwards, crushing it until the gas gets so dense it ignites. A star bursts into life.